thank you for organizing this um, workshop and uh, thank you for accepting my paper uh, to present. Um, I am um, a PhD student um, at um, Arizona State University in the Department of Psychology and um, um, presented this paper with collaboration with um, Frank Inferna, uh, my mentor. Um, so this paper is uh, um, borrowing similar concept as uh, Frank uh, presented and looking, focusing on Ghana. So he started historical change in health and well-being of Ghanaian middle age and older adults. And this is part of my thesis and um, all feedback is welcome. So I'm going to get into it. Um, so by way of introduction, um, <clears throat> Uh, we know that uh, many developmental changes occur with aging in major life domains, beginning often in midlife, um, for instances. Um, health changes um, and examples of that have been um, increasing chronic diseases and then sleep problems. Uh, we also know this report of um, changes in cognition, where there's um, evidence showing that there's gradual decline in fluid intelligence and increase in crystallized intelligence. Um, um, Research is also showing and have, have established that many of these developmental changes occur are, are shaped by social cultural context and mechanisms in life. And we are led to um, <clears throat> understand that uh, factors within um, a given period or histor historical period often are responsible, of uh, capable of shaping some of these changes that um, are observed in, in p individuals. So historical time events like wars and, and a typical example is COVID-19. Um, have the potential to shape um, developmental trends of um, people. Um, to analyze these historical um, um, changes, um, oftentimes the, the research shows that um, his, uh, mod, um, health and well-being outcomes are modeled and similarities and differences between same age adults born in different historical times um, are estimated. And um, out of this research, we are finding a lot of um, empirical findings um, and and an example of this give me a second okay sorry an example of this is research by Gestoff in 2011 which shows that um, later born cohorts of older adults in the US are very much better on indicators of cognition than earlier born cohort in this study um, they use um, data from Seattle Longitudinal study to compare both age related and mortality related changes between uh, earlier born cohort and also later born cohort on five domains of cognition. And as you can see here, um, later born cohorts who are represented with a, a thick black line um, and then uh, earlier born cohorts who are represented with a dotted line. Uh, as you can see, later born cohorts are um, performed better on spatial orientation and inductive reasoning, word fluency, verbal meaning than earlier born cohorts. But there was very, um, stability around uh, number. This finding also has been um, replicated in, in middle-aged adults and, um, um, and the result generally shows a trend where later born cohorts of middle-aged adults in the US are reporting more depressive symptoms or generally uh, poorer health and well-being outcomes um, as indicated by even um, depressive symptoms and also um, uh, episodic memories where, for instance, later born cohorts um, later born cohorts born in 1960s are, are reporting more depressive symptoms compared to, say, um, those born in uh, 1940s and 1940, uh, 1949. And similarly, too, we see this trend in episodic memory. This study by uh, Inferna et al. in 2001 also was, um, was a cross-cultural study, so it was conducted in other countries using data, using using data, uh, Latino data as well. And then um, in these other countries like Germany, South Korea, and then Mexico, the trend was reversed where later born cohorts are reporting much significant gains in well-being and health uh, compared to um, earlier born cohorts, right? So as this um, empirical studies are developing, theory is being, is being updated. Um, one major question is that, um, one major gap that remains unaddressed is whether the same patterning of historical improvement or declines occurs in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and uh, I narrowed on uh, in Ghana for a specific reason, and um, and uh, these are the reasons why I narrowed the data, my research on Ghana. So Ghana is a low-middle-income country um, in sub-Saharan Africa in the West 
part of uh, Africa. Uh, many historical events and changes in norms have occurred over the years. For instance, there was colonial rule back in the days. And, uh, and then after colonial rule, there was pre-independence and then the independence um, was at, uh, attained in 1957. And after um, a couple of years after down the lane, after independence, then the military, military took over and we had about 20 years of military rule, uh, which um, within this era, there were a lot of um, um, roller coaster of economic um, economic burden and hardship, uh, which have major implications of the health of um, adults uh, born in this era. And post military there was um, independence, and uh, during independence, after independence, many policies, uh, warfare policies were were implemented. That um, um, hopefully, and we can see that there's some significant gains have occurred over the years post um, military. Rule. There's also um demographic change where there's increasing over the years, um, about 20 years, and um, there's been increasing number of older people. And then there's also increases in life expectancy, uh, which means that Ghana must be prepared to support the aging population with their unique health and social um, needs through uh, even conducting research. So research is actually even showing that there's um, many of these research that is going and showing that there's rapid increases in health and well-being problems in adults. Uh, where um, research by Latte is showing an increase in over overweight and obesity um, with a plus five uh, percent prevalence rate over seven years using the um the SAGE data um from 2007 to 2015. Um there's also increases have been also reported in empirical studies um on mental health conditions where psychological um distress has um has increased over over the years as well. And um, whilst this report of rapid increases in health and well-being problems in, in adults is being reported, there's also variations observed for gender and as well as um, education, where, for instance, higher education has been shown to be protective against poor mental health states and uh, women um, consistently, especially in the cases of obesity and psychological distress, have been reported to be at greater risk. So all this all this um evidence is now um showing that there's a need for us to um, actually examine pattern of historical change in health and well-being of um adults in Ghana so my research question then became what are the pattern of historical change in health and well-being in later versus earlier born cohorts of middle age and older adults in Ghana and how does this and uh, exploratorily how does this uh, vary with gender and um, educational attainment so my main hypothesis is later born cohorts uh, of middle age adults and older adults would report better health and well-being functioning than their same age uh, earlier born. And I propose this on account that um, the turnover that Ghana experienced at post uh, post um, military rule or in during democracy in 1992 onwards um, have brought about um, improvement and gains in areas of education, health, and, and employment. And this may be contributing to um, better health for um, recent born or later born cohorts of adults. And I explored um, further the gender gender moderation and also educational moderation in these core differences. So data, the methods. Um, so I relied on the WHO study on global aging and adult health um, data, um, the SAGE data, where I, I was able to acquire uh, three waves of the data. So the fourth wave is currently in production, so it, it's not um, available. So we're only able to um, have access to these three data sets and modeled um, and studied our, um, our research question. So these data sets um, was collected from between 2002, 2015, and they use a some um, multi-stage cluster sampling where um, population was divided into 10 administrative uh, region. It, in back in the days, it was 10 administrative regions, now uh, 16 administrative regions. Um, and this administrative region were further divided into rural urban and then data was collected from adults, uh, 15, 50 plus, but then there were also younger adults, um, data was also collected from younger adults. Um, the sample, analytical sample for the, for this research is middle-aged adults and older adults, um, 30 plus. Um, total sample, analytical sample was 9,000 participants, 11,000 um, observations in all. Um, birth years ranged from 1894 to 1984, uh, with a mean of 1952 and a standard deviation of uh, 14. 
women um, dominated uh, the sample. Um, so we had about 54.41, 55.41 uh, percentage of women, and then um, participants, um, the greater percentage of participants had no formal education um, of a number of 41.93 percent. So measures, and these are the um, the outcome measures. Uh, we use self reports. We focus on self reports, which were consisted across uh, waves. Um, the objective um, measures were only started in the second wave and not the first one. So, uh, because of the three wave uh, consistency, we we relied only on we analyzed data for only um, self reports, which were self reported health and depressive symptoms. An example of um, an item on the depressive symptom um, measure is during the last twelve months. Have you? had a period lasting several days when you felt sad, empty, or depressed. Uh, predators were aging years, centered at 60. 60 is the uh, mandated age of retirement for um, adults in Ghana. So we we, we um, use that as a basis for our century. Beth year was centered at 1951, and then time in study was also uh, considered as a predictor. Uh, we use growth curve models um, um, in SAS, PROC, uh, MIX, and NGLEMIX. PROC MIX was used for uh, self-reported health and clinics for uh, depressive symptoms because depressive symptom um, variable was uh, non-normal. And so we um, uh, dichotomized that variable to zero one and um, use logistic regression and therefore a pocket clinic. Um, these are um, our equation and interpretation would be on birth year and um, our significance was uh, pegged at um, 0 0.01. So to the results. So this is the first table, and um, uh, or, and with self-reported health on the left, at least my left, um, and then depressive symptoms on the right, and um, like I said, self-reported health, um, um, the parameter estimates were reported with a standard error for depressive symptoms, predicted likelihood, and then and these associated confidence intervals. So interpretation of um, core differences are uh, by birth year. So as you can see here, um, there was um, uh, a negative um, um, uh, relationship between um, birth year and also um, self-reported health, whereby um, the um, those born earlier um, reported um, less um, self-reported health, and this is further depicted with um, a, a, or better depicted with a graph. So um, what we did was to um, graph this. Um, and uh, this results um, showing that later born cohorts are reporting poor self-reported uh, health. And then we used um, significant transitional periods in, in Ghana's history. Um, for instance, uh, people born in between the military from 1967, 60, 69 to 1984, and independence and so on. And for this figure, self-reported health is re reported on the Y axis and also on the X axis, the chronological age. So as you can see, later born cohorts are reporting poor self-reported health. And, and uh, you can see here, uh, for example, that military uh, or, or adults born in the, during the areas of the military rule uh, reported um, poor uh, self-reported health compared to the others. Um, going on, moving on to um, gender differences, uh, we didn't find any gender or educational differences as a moderation. Um, so in, Discussion and conclusion. Um, I and we are still thinking about this. Uh, we uh, so any feedback is welcome. Um, but in brief conclusion, um, later born cohorts of middle age adults and older adults in Ghana, on average, are reporting lower self-reported health than their earlier born cohorts. And we are thinking this could be driven by uh, changes in dynamics in employment and economic demands over the years. Uh, it's also possible that. Um, disruption in traditional family and social life brought up upon by um, modernization and urbanization could be driving this, um, <clears throat> these differences. And some reports, uh, empirical reports have uh, reported how there's been a, a large change in, change in family and social life over the years as well. And um, it's also possible that lifestyle behaviors where even um, work and labor has become very um, sedentary compared to uh, back in the days. Um, so um, that could also drive some of the differences we are seeing, but we are still thinking about it and we would uh, hopefully be able to write something uh, concrete. Um, no, there was no um, core differences uh, in reports of depressive symptoms between earlier and later born cohorts of middle age and older adults in Ghana. 
and this could be driven by power constraints. Um, similarly, uh, no significant score differences was um, observed for moderation of gender and educational um, and uh, attainment, and similarly to um, power constraints. By way of limitation and also future directions, um, power and data point constraints, uh, we were hoping that we would ha have uh, more power if we if we had additional waves. Um, however, we only had access to three waves, and hopefully when we get <clears throat> uh, another yeah. wave, we will be able to replicate the same uh, model uh, on the four data points. And this data, um, uh, this research is also by way of descriptive analysis. So, um, a more, and by way of future direction, a more, um, <clears throat> more focus needs to be given to, um, to testing underlying mechanisms, um, in future studies. And um, hopefully, when we have um comparable data sets across sub South Africa, it'll be um also be interesting to look at cross national comparisons, um. I know that the SAGE data, there's also availability of data set in, in South Africa, um, but access constraints is also um, a presenting a challenge. But once that is um, overcome, um, it'll be interesting to look at how um, Ghana and South Africa may be different in, in terms of historic, historical change. And hopefully we may also as, expand this investigation to other sub um, subgroups as a result of poor historical trajectory, for instance, those living in the rural and urban areas where research has been shown that um, um there are differences in pattern of health and well-being across um uh, rural and urban um <clears throat> location. So um permit me to go back in conclusion, um we are observing that later born cohorts of middle aged adults and older adults in Ghana on average are reporting lower self-reported health than earlier borns. There's no significant difference in in reports of um, depressive symptoms um, between earlier and later born cohorts of middle age adults in Ghana. And um, I would like to say thank you uh, to um, my mentor for the guidance and support. Um, and thank you for um, to, to give me, uh, giving me this opportunity to present my work and also my thesis committee members, as well as the Sage Data um, team, uh, Ghana Sage Data team, to give me access to, granting me access to this data to run my models. So thank you.